This is the Bible in one year, day six, Directions for Life. Pippa and I are often in a hurry. We're not good at planning our car journeys. We often set off in the wrong direction and frequently get lost, even with the sat-nav. I don't know why it's taken me so long to learn the importance of getting good directions and following them. Many of us are like this in life. We charge off in a hurry. We don't realize the importance of getting good directions for life. If you follow God's directions for life, you will enjoy his blessing and bring blessing to others. Psalm 5. Start each day waiting for directions. When embarking on a journey, the best time to get good directions is before you begin. In this psalm, we have a wonderful example of how to begin each day. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God. For to you I pray, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. David's waiting for directions. There's something special about beginning your day by laying your requests before God. The whole day has a different dimension as you wait expectantly. Lord, today I lay my requests before you and wait for directions. Lead me, O Lord. Spread your protection over me. Surround me with your favor as with a shield. New Testament, Matthew 5. Follow Jesus' directions for life. There are some general directions that apply to every car journey. They're the rules of the road. Jesus' directions in the Sermon on the Mount are like a highway code for a life of blessing. Following Jesus' directions involves a radical lifestyle. He challenges us to be ruthless in dealing with every wrong attitude, thought, word and action. Our words should be words of blessing, not anger. Do not speak angry words against your brothers and sisters. The simple moral fact is that words kill. We are called to do everything within our power to bless those we have fallen out with. If we remember a grudge a friend has against us, we should go to the friend and try to make things right. If we encounter an old enemy, we should make the first move, make things right with them. We need to guard what we do with our eyes and our heart. If we allow them to become corrupted, then far from being a blessing to others, we will be rotten ourselves. Take radical action. It's not simply about the physical act of adultery. Jesus says, don't think that you preserved your virtue simply by staying out of bed. Your heart can be corrupted by lust, even quicker than your body. Those leering looks you think nobody notices, they also corrupt. Jesus speaks of the eye as the starting point of adultery. Take radical steps to avoid such a course. As Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a girl. Marriage is intended to be a place of blessing one another and a source of blessing for others. This means a life of radical faithfulness within marriage. Jesus speaks against using divorce as a cover for selfishness and whim. We're to live lives of radical integrity in which we say what we mean and mean what we say. Let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Blessing others means blessing even those who do bad things to us. Don't hit back at all. No more tit-for-tat stuff. Live generously. To return evil for good is demonic. To return good for good is human. To return good for evil is the way of Jesus. Lord, help me this year to follow your directions for life and to spread blessing wherever I go. Old Testament, Genesis 11-13 to Trust God to direct you one step at a time. What I love more than anything when I set out on a long car journey, even better than a sat-nav, is to have someone in the car with me who knows the directions and tells me one step at a time where I should go. In the journey of life, God offers to accompany you and direct you one step at a time into a life of blessing. This is one of the key moments in the Bible as God initiates his rescue plan for humanity. The previous chapters have been a tale of increasing sinfulness and separation from God. In these verses, suddenly everything shifts as God reveals his solution. Abraham! God promises Abraham, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I'll make your name great 
and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God chooses one individual and blesses him and then one nation and blesses them. But his plan is always that they'll pass the blessing on. This is key for our understanding of the Old Testament as it explains why God chose Israel so that through them the whole world might be blessed. Ultimately, this promise is fulfilled in Jesus. He is the fulfillment of all the promises and hopes of Israel. And through him, all peoples can be blessed. This is now God's purpose for you. The Apostle Paul writes, Those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. The church is blessed like Abraham and Israel, not for its own sake, but in order to bring blessing to the whole world. If you have been blessed by God, it's not for your own selfish indulgence or self-congratulation. It is in order that you can be a blessing to others. God calls Abraham to leave his country, his people, and his father's household, and go to the land God is going to show him. Abraham did exactly as the Lord directed him. He trusted God to direct him one step at a time. He could not have seen the next steps at this time, but he trusted God's promises. This has been my experience in life. God may give us a general picture of what he wants us to do. But as far as the details are concerned, he leads us one step at a time. The life of faith involves following his directions one step at a time. The journey is not always entirely smooth. Abraham was very much a flawed human being, just like us. God blessed him with great wealth and a stunningly beautiful wife. Nevertheless, in an act of weakness and deception, he allows Pharaoh to take her as his wife. Then, after quarreling arose between Abraham's herdsmen and Lot's, Abraham decides that there has to be a parting of the ways between himself and his nephew. Actually, it was not Abraham and Lot who fell out. It was, as so often happens, their followers. The reality of friction in human relationships is very evident. Lot chose the best land and left Abraham with what looked less good. But again, God gives Abraham directions. He tells him, Look around where you are. God said, I'll make your descendants like dust. Counting your descendants will be as impossible as counting the dust of the earth. So, on your feet, get moving. Walk through the country, its length and breadth. I'm giving it all to you. As Joyce Meyer writes, instead of becoming discouraged, depressed or angry when people disappoint us, God wants us to lift up our eyes, look around. And trust him to lead us into an even better situation. He wants us to look around and count our blessings instead of focusing on what we do not have. He wants us to fix our eyes on him, not on the work of the enemy, because he has plans to bless us. It is only because of the grace of God that Abraham is promised these amazing blessings. The intention was that he would be a blessing to the whole world. Likewise for you. You are called to live under God's blessing and bring blessing to those around you. Lord, help me this year to follow your directions one step at a time, to live under your blessing and to bring as much blessing as I can to everyone around. Pippa adds, We all need guidance every day in all the difficult decisions of life. Following a straight path saves us wandering off, wasting time and energy. My prayer today is Psalm 5, verse 8, where we read, Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Make straight your way for me. Psalm 5 Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. 
for thou art not a god that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come, and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, Cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of them should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. 
And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, These are the generations of Shem. Shem was an hundred years old and begat Arthaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arthaxad five hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And Arthaxad lived five and thirty years and begat Salah. And Arthaxad lived after he begat Salah four hundred and three years and begat sons and daughters. And Salah lived thirty years and begat Eber. And Salah lived after he begat Eber four hundred and three years and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years, and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years, and begat Ru. And Peleg lived after he begat Ru two hundred and nine years, and begat sons and daughters. And Ru lived two and thirty years, and begat Serug. And Ru lived after he begat Serug two hundred and seven years, and begat sons and daughters. And Serug lived thirty years, and begat Nahor. And Serag lived after he begat Nahor two hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years, and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah an hundred and nineteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years, and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years. And Terah died in Haran. Genesis 12. Now the Lord. This is the Bible in one year. Day 6. Directions for life. We are often in a hurry. We're not good at planning our car journeys. We often... Genesis 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran, and Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, 
and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land and unto the of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moray. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built it he unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and Ai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians uh, shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, Thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass, that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair, the princes also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep, and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh, and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram, and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why dost thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou, She is my sister, so I might have taken her to be my wife? Now therefore behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. Genesis 13. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him, into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Prizide dwelled then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. For we be brethren, is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed for ever. 
and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord.